what seems to happen with track and field. We get all excited when the Olympics come, you know, we follow these stars once every four years and then it's kind of crickets. Why, why do you think that is? Yeah, I think it's, you know, it's, it's really difficult as a diehard track and field fan to kind of see the rest of the world, not, you know, keep that high level of excitement through the next three years between Olympics. But you know, I spent six years at Sports Illustrated and I felt it, you know, in the same way where, um, you know, the interest really peaks the during an Olympic year and then it tapers off maybe for two years. And then in two, you know, basically the year before the Olympics, that's when it starts to kind of pick up again, because, you know, a place like Sports Illustrated or ESPN or any of these major uh, sports media places is it starts prepping for, you know, all right, now who is it that we're going to try and focus on next year and how can we get ahead of it and, you know, do some planning. So um, it's hard for for there to be that two year sort of layoff. And the the thing, the challenge is that raising the awareness that there are these other meets, uh, you know, world championships that take place uh, most years between Olympics and, uh, these diamond league meets that are also very high caliber. And so, um, I think there's, it's, it's hard because there's so many track and field stars to keep track of and, yeah. you know, trying to explain it to someone as a, like, here's how you follow along. I mean, there's still a lot of work to do, I think, in t- trying to simplify that for, for a fan because, you know, it's just really spread out globally and, you know, there's a lot of people to keep track of. Yeah. And it's kind of confusing, you know, like I consider myself a track fan. I am not a track nerd, you know, like I uh, love watching the big events, but like, you know, Diamond League, World Championship, what does all this stuff mean? You know, like it's not clear. Like if you watch football, there's, you know, there's a very clear, um, you know, cadence of how these things work. And, you know, you, you follow a plan, whereas in track, one meet, what does it mean? Like for a fan, that's really hard to understand. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. Like I have this conversation. I've got a lot of friends of mine who uh, I've met through the running community here in New York city. And they're also sort of not big track and field fans. They love running and they love, you know, training for marathons and half marathons, but they're not track and field fans. And so for me, the challenge is always like, how can I get them a little bit interested in it? And it's maybe sometimes introducing them to um, an athlete or an athlete's story and having them kind of follow at least like one person. And so that they know maybe if they start following them on Instagram, they're like, oh, I see that this person's racing here. Maybe I'll tune into this race. And so there's that. It, it's so challenging because, you know, uh, we just had a conversation with, you know, the legendary Michael Johnson not too long ago yes. um, at the World Championships. And he was kind of pointing it out like there is no sort of, you know, thread between all these different meets. You, you tune in to watch the you know, Diamond League in Poland, and they're not really talking about, you know, the Diamond League that's coming up in Monaco. And you you kind of should use that to set up some of these bigger storylines to come. But you don't, maybe sometimes you don't know who's racing or who's ultimately going to show up. Uh, You know, uh, to your point as well, you see these people all running in the same color uniform, but then when they get to the world championships, they're in their national kits and sometimes, but they're not on the same team. It's, it's, it's really confusing. And so, um, there's a lot, a lot of work that needs to be done to kind of just really, you know, simplify it for people, especially if we're, we're, we're hoping to tap into some sort of a, at least like an entry level fan base, because, you know, there, everyone makes the point that there's so many, you know, recreational runners out there and marathoners. And, you know, there's that back of the pack, you know, there's 50,000 runners in the New York City Marathon. And I would assume that, you know, maybe 20,000, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, know what's happening in the front or know somebody who's in the front <laughs> of the race. But even that seems like an optimistic projection by me. And so mm-hmm. how can we get as many of those people to connect to what's happening in the front end of the race? And, 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 you know, beyond that, what's happening on the track, because some of these athletes are coming from that background. And so, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's tough. And then at the same time, you know, at the high school level, there's so many, uh, you know, athletes participating in the sport there where it's, you know, the biggest sport in the country, but then are these kids aware that there's, 
you know, a whole college scene and then a professional scene beyond that? Or are they just so invested in their own sort of, you know, athletic, you know, pursuits? And so, you know, there, there are people out there who can connect with, you know, running and then, and track and field. It's just sort of like, how can we streamline it to make it a little bit more easy uh, for them to find, you know, that connection?